we also got uh, my man Ray Wall, man. He he has a um he has a um comment. He says, just saw the Odell incident on the plane. They treated him like a king. It's good to be a stunt man. You can force everyone off the plane, joy ride in a Ferrari, steal up to a thousand dollars at a at department stores, all without getting in serious trouble. Yeah, I mean, being a son, man, is is, is it, it has its privileges, man. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, so so Friday, dropping the single, man. Hope you guys like it, man. Um, put a lot of um, work with a lot of great um, a great people on this one, man. And um, I think I think it's gonna be. I think it's a hit. I hope it's a hit. I think it's a hit. Um, we'll see. They have responded to the call of a shooting at around 1130 this morning, and they found the teen in a car riddled with bullets. He died at the hospital. Erica Ferrando spoke with neighbors who live in that area about the crime. And Erica, what did our neighbors have to say? Well, Sharice and Katie were 18 days into the new year, and this most recent homicide in Central City marked the 17th murder this year, according to NOPD reports. I spoke with neighbors in Central City. They're one a day. And this is a small, this is 300,000 people, man. 350,000 people. This is not fucking million people in the city. 300,000. Following the loss of yet another young person, they all had the same message. This needs to stop. <laughs> what y'all think about that message, man? I man, think it, fuck that message. it's an old message. <laughs> Water is wet. <laughs> this needs to stop, man. How, so we, how about so let's look at how it started. I believe I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is crazy, man. I mean, it's just like, really? Salute the Laughing Dog. Salute the number one stunner, man. Um, Laughing Dog says, hardest working unsun man I know. Oh, no, I'm a sun man, man. I'm a whole sun man. Don't get it twisted, man. Don't try to unsun man me, man. I got the DNA, man. I can't. It is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is what it is, man. Um, whoo. Um, salute to Nate Ways. He said, "I got the COVID, Chief." Oh man, 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 man. Um, I you hope you feel us, better. You got to tell us what your symptoms are, man. You gotta, you gotta break it down for us. What's going on with your, um, with your symptoms, man? Because, um, you are vaxxed, right? Nah, Nate Ways ain't vaxxed. I, I, would, I would be shocked if Nate Ways was vaxxed, man. But... You think Nasty Nate is vaxxed? Hell no. <laughs> I don't, but see, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Like, most of the people I know that got it are vaxxed. Like, I know a ton of people. My um my brother-in-law, his whole family got vaxxed. I think he got like, three kids and a wife. Everybody got vaxxed and boosted. And that shit went through their house. They were all down. I mean, they were sick. Sick, sick. Uh -huh. Everybody I know that that got the poke, they all keep catching the shit, man. They just keep catching it for some reason. Yep. yep. Well, I caught it from somebody at work who was vaxxed. And I was sick for, I, I had a fever for like 15 hours. And oh, that's that was bad. it. That's that was bad. it. That's not bad. That's not bad. You had a you had you had um a little minor strain, or maybe you strong got a strong immune system or something. Well, also for about eight months, I was using uh, vitamin D, zinc, and vitamin C just as my normal routine. Oh, yep. okay, okay. Another thing that works is elderberry, black elderberry. Um, is very good um, for your system. Black elderberry. It only comes yep. in droppers. Black seed oil, too, works well. The thing with black seed oil, it makes you lose weight. Yep. You got to you gotta be careful about black seed oil. It's very it's very effective, but you'll drop weight like a crackhead. Um, Georgia Swan says, hey, Op, you've been loading some great clips lately. Hope to chat with you again soon. Yeah, man, Georgia, man, you're always welcome, man. Um. Salute to, salute to, we got Eric the Red. He says, challenge accepted from Chicago Sun, man. <sighs> yeah. Um, Nate said, Another word. thing that works is being healthy. People need to take care of themselves. You need to exercise. You need to run. I mean, you don't have to be like doing CrossFit or all that type of stuff, but you need to be able to, your body has to be able to withstand stress. 
And that's one of the benefits you get when you do have a good cardio program, a good workout. All the people who uh, were lost from COVID, a lot of them, they were overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes. COVID is an inflammatory disease. It attacks the lungs. It causes inflammation. And one of the highest forms of inflammation is obesity, high blood pressure. That's the reason why in the people of color community, as they say, why, uh, uh, burritos, sun people, and in the southern states, a lot of whites who are obese died. And that's the reason why it was not effective in killing off children. Mm. But now with the vaccine that people have taken, you've essentially weakened your immune system. So that's why you keep getting it over and over and over again. Salute to Doug Chunks. So salute to Blacklisted. Salute to um, Doug Chunks. He says, watching at high speed again, almost caught up. Um, salute to old school. Yeah, man. Um, it's Salute to everybody taking the $5 challenge, man. Appreciate all you guys. Um, it's it, It's... It's really no fucking solution, man. It's just sad that at the end of the day that, that he keep. I would rather these people say nothing than say this. The homicide in Central City marked the 17th murder this year, according to NOPD reports. I spoke with neighbors in Central City following the loss of yet another young person. They all had the same message. This needs to stop. It happens too much every day another young life lost to this happens so much every day some fucking mammy screaming her blood curdling fucking anguish and a fucking car riddled with bullets in police tape every this happens every day on martin yeah, yeah. you see that martin luther king jr Boulevard. yeah that's typical that's typical in the hood i mean my God, man. Shit, man. This, 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 this happens every day. It's too much. Every day. Another young life lost to gun violence. All black kids killing up each other. Wednesday in Central City. In Salute to her, man. Salute you, to her. You, you see how she look. Uh, that pink hair. That yeah. this, this, that's a piercing. I just hate piercing people's faces. But look, you see that pink hair? She tacky. She too old for that. She tacky. She the reason why the young boys acting the way they act. Yep. And she's a prime uh, candidate for uh, all of them conditions yep. uh, for, that exacerbate COVID. What the hell's wrong with her hairline? She a old. Lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, well, somebody got a lot of uh, feedback going on in the background. Um, Nate Way says 4 30 a.m. I was fine. 6 30. I started getting body aches. My body and head hurt so damn bad. Still have a fever, but I broke out the pain at 9 30 p.m. Okay, so he, he on the he on the um Nate Ways is on the um downward side. He's 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 coming out of it. That's good to know, man. Um Wednesday in Central City, in broad daylight just before noon, a 19-year-old was in a car when someone started shooting, witnesses said. People was running and ducking. A family member told us the victim was in the car with his mother and two siblings when he was shot. Jesus Christ. That's terrible. That is fucking horrible, man. They don't care who's around. Salute to David for the cat for the um, cash up. It, that, that's it, the anybody can get him mentality. Exactly, exactly. That that's a different yep. from my day. That's different from my day. My day it, there were there were mur more murders in my day. They haven't quite caught up to where um we were in, in the in the eighties and nineties. But if you was with your goddamn mother, man, and your fucking little siblings, man, most uh, I don't know, man. I just didn't you know, you just, it was kind of like, off limits if you were with civilians. Yeah, it's just like golly. I, I think a lot of the numbers now are due to the medical advances in keeping these people alive. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, you know, how, how many more would die in Philly if the cops just didn't throw them in the car? Right, uh, the the um the scoop and run. Yeah, a yep. lot of different tactics and whatnot. No, no, hold on. When I say this, there was more murders. It, there's still cities now that are catching up. This is oh, yeah. like Philadelphia is catching up. 
um to where um it's certain cities but like um most of the cities like like even new orleans is starting to catch up but it was there i think by 2025 there'll be it'll be like the late 80s 90s oh yeah surely but we had we had solved this problem it's kind of like you never know a good thing till it's gone as bad as blackistan was in the the, the 2000s and the 2010s as bad as it was we did not know how good we had it bad because i'm a mother on myself and uh huh who wants to see their child get killed in front of you in front of your face right there coming from where i'm coming from all you see is this all you see is drugs and some people subjectify that and make that seem as if that's all we live for but no and as the car was left with bullet holes and shattered windows another family was left with unfathomable grief we don't have no that, cop. people we could turn to just in the community this 24 year old didn't want to share his name but says young people need positive influences and in activities they have sports they have parks i mean that's the basics to say go out but, but who wants to go to this fucking park with a bunch of bullies and the bullies got guns like, this ain't the fucking bullies that's going to give you a wedgie. These are bullies, bullies that are going to give you a fucking shit bag. Right. If you can have a thousand parks, but if every one of those parks has a bully with a gun, oh. what's the use? Yeah, a bunch of bullies with guns. But you got to think, when we go out, we'll be going out and we'll be got to pass to get to these parks. What we got to go through the, 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 to get to the, to the few positive things that we have in the city they cut all the programs out for our black children and this deadly shooting they did not cut oh my god did she say a cheer she really believes she believes they've taken money away from this nonsense she has no idea how many millions of dollars have been sunken into this foolishness you know why that's the way but you know why? And I'm going to tell you the, the reason why. Because it's not her fucking money. It's the tax base of New Orleans. The fucking gliders right. and them fucking right. rich blacks that live down there in fucking New Orleans that are paying for all this shit. She don't know nobody. She knows nobody who's got any skin in the game. So she, in her mind, yeah, they take money away from this stuff. Because she, she, her fucking friends she play cards with ladies at her church none of them fucking pay a dollar in taxes they all get fucking I, five thousand i don't, 10, I don't think this but, i don't think this woman got friends in church yeah we have in the city they cut all the programs out for our black children and this deadly shooting happened as city council members were a mile away holding a heated meeting to discuss how to fight the crime if they feel as if what they can do to better to make to make a change in the better our neighborhood and come on i don't have to i shouldn't have to ask you to i shouldn't have to ask council members or or politicians or people with with, with power to come down and oh we need your help you see we need your help just like if you had a family yeah but they know that once they fucking start helping you it's like quicksand there's no solution and every time you move you get sunk deeper in this quicksand those and because and and this more, more and more money some entitlement sense of entitlement they have to come to him your people are the ones creating the problems why aren't you going out going down there what is he doing with the whole whole day i bet if we follow him on a, just on a 24-hour day what do you think he's doing the whole day drinking beer hanging pork out rinds from the gas station carrying a gun Looking for some Damn, what's wrong with those things? Arguing, arguing with his baby <laughs> mama yeah talk about carrying a gun and eating pork rinds is a bad thing it's or it's bad thing. if that's all you fucking do. And it's bad if you're him. Like, and it's just, bad if you beg other people to do something for you. Like, right. Marcy, I'm, you got to understand, Marcy, like, I'm playing with you it's guys. not good I'm playing with, for these I'm guys playing, to be I'm, I'm playing, playing with you. I'm messing okay. mess with you. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> You know, if it, I don't know. I ain't going to judge this, man. He might got a job. No, nah, I, I bet he run his damn mouth all day about shit he ain't doing nothing about. Yeah, definitely. Um, salute, um, Caleb West says, Jackson, Mississippi. The sun kids are growing up and having kids. We got to go to Jackson today, man. It's been a while since we've been to Jackson. I think since uh, the Deion Sanders thing, man. What's going on? Did you, um, have you been to Memphis lately? I haven't been out yet. 
Like um, we, we did a whole show on Memphis maybe last week. It has been a, it's been a while. Can you slide through Memphis? <laughs> yeah, we 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 we'll slide through Memphis. Um, we got we got to do Jackson and then Memphis, man. This is it's a lot going on. Memphis man. Memphis got it on the George Floyd uh case going on. Oh God, oh Lord, Lord help us. Um, that's you know, just what we needed. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he says. Bad crumb we'll, involved too. Oh God. Soon we'll start seeing purges. They call it op day. Um, yeah, um, we're gonna get we're gonna slide over to Jackson, man. Um, Doug Chunk says, I think a comprehensive year by year chart of number of people shot versus number of people killed would be very enlightening. Um, yeah, I mean, you got half of the city limping around and shit, man. It's fucking, it's fucking crazy, man. I, have to, I shouldn't have to ask you to, I shouldn't have to ask council members or or politicians or people with but but power to come down and oh we need your help you see we need your help just like if you had a family member that needed help you're not gonna wait till they say i need help you're gonna address the problem as is detectives are still working to figure out a possible suspect and motive the victim's name hasn't been released all right thank you erica and again emotions it's very complex, and I hope that Excuse we discussed it all. Excuse me. No, let me no, no, no. no, no. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Look, look. Excuse me. Excuse me. Look. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You see it there. It was at times a chaotic council meeting today, with the city council turning its focus to the spike in violent crimes in New Orleans, as they try and learn what the root of the problem is and how to address it. Good evening, everyone. They try to learn what the root of the Why problem. do they always want to learn the roots of the problem? Yes. Who cares? <laughs> Lock them up. We, we know the roots the of the problem. We know the roots of the problem. <laughs> they, they, they Negroes. They some roots. Negroes. That's the it. Root, the root of the problem is roots. <laughs> roots. The movie Roots. Um, this is, this is, this is, this is sad, man. Like, this is, remember the guy in the last clip was like, um, we don't. We shouldn't have to go down there. They should come to us. Well, these people went down there, and this is what you get. It's focus to the spike in violent crimes in New Orleans as they try and learn what the root of the problem is and how to address it. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for watching. I'm Katie Moore. And I'm Sharice Gibson. Council members are trying to learn what the root of the crime problem is and how to address it. They sure are. And Paul Murphy was at that special meeting. He's joining us live from City Hall tonight with all the details. Paul? Okay, Sharice, the temperature and the mood inside the city council meeting are a direct reflection of the frustration and anger many residents feel. And the city's current crime trajectory is troubling. And there are no simple solutions to the problem. In New Orleans, crime hits close to home for many. City council members heard from neighbors now demanding action. When you gotta go to the gas station with your gun in your hip, when you got to go to the grocery store with your gun on your pocket, that's a war zone. Where is... That's a Tuesday. That's you, Marcy. Uh oh, Marcy. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be complaining about it, so I guess not really me. Shit, Marcy, you don't live in New Orleans, man. You got to... Marcy, you got to you gotta realize, man, you're not around real sons, man. <laughs> It's different. It's a whole different vibe, man, when you're around real thuns, man. Like I tell you about, like, D.C., it's, them dudes are retarded, man. Baltimore, it's not like just like being around in the country where you live at, man. It's is real aggressive. Be <laughs> before, before I started watching you, I, I never knew how much danger i was in living in memphis i mean because you you probably like it's also too like everybody not gonna die everybody not gonna get car checked everybody not gonna get killed you know what i'm saying yeah so by the cities having so many people yeah i could i could understand that man like a lot of people you know what i'm saying if you don't frequent certain areas you stay away from some people in general, you probably increase, decrease your 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 um even thought of like because you don't you're not around sun people. Were were you around a lot of sun people in Memphis? Hell yeah. But I mean, like you know, what I'm saying like 
Yeah, yeah. like yeah, I was yeah. yeah I, look, the exit that I got off to get to my house nickname was Murder Eight. So you did know how much? Oh, you just didn't. You just weren't. Didn't I just care. wasn't. Yeah, I just didn't pay any attention. Okay, you were just desensitized. I guess. <laughs> you get off at Murder Eight exit. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Like, just normal then. <laughs> like, just, I didn't know it was murder eight so I, at work, and the inmate was like, "That's murder eight I'm like, "That's what I call it." I'm like, "That's terrible." <laughs> it's a war time. Where is the facilities? Where is Nor? We need facilities like Nor. Nor changed my life as a child. We went from integration to gentrification is all on the back of miseducation so if you want to fix crime fix the schools we have gun control we have this we have that mr perkins and we're doing the same old crazy insane things over and over and over again the special meeting on crime comes at a time when the city is experiencing its highest murder rate since 1996. crime analyst jeff asher gave an over well, it is back to the 90s review showing aggravated assault armed robbery, car theft, and vehicle burglaries have all seen double-digit increases year over year. Look at these Negroes, man. These Negroes, man, they just, they don't know how to govern. They don't know how to be governed. It's just it's hopeless. I mean, we, we've seen this in Jackson, Baltimore, <laughs> Mobile. It's every fucking city. They're doing they're just screaming at somebody, fighting. We've seen this in Cheyenne. It's the same thing every why, fucking place. Why uh why that woke woman was rapping? What she was talking about? She thought she said something slick. She can't even spell half the words she used. Miseducation of gentrification of simplification. And somebody the should have asked her, in the chamber what does that mean? Somebody should have asked her, ma'am, what does that mean? They, we're they, they were like, she, and then she gonna talk for another hour. She, you don't ask her no questions. You just let her talk and get past the mic. Emotions ran high in the chamber as tempers flared at times in the crowd. The meeting had to be stopped several times to get the situation under control. One woman was handcuffed and others were escorted by police out of the meeting. Whereas people saw the conflict okay. and the raised voices today as chaos, what I saw that is, is a community that's in pain. City council members proposed no a shit. series of measures to address what they called an epidemic of crime. They touched on topics such as responsible gun ownership, truancy, and juvenile curfew. City health director, Dr. Jennifer Avegno called violent That's the same jackass as yesterday, isn't it? Yep. In the city. She said the data shows murder is the fourth leading cause of death for black men in New Orleans. I submit that we would not tolerate any other disease Only that targeted four. a segment of our community. Yeah, what the hell so are the other three? Diabetes. Oh, FEMA, FEMA pork chops and diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're falling out. Like, like I think a lot of people understand, like, when a, when a black community, like, like a 60% black city, everybody's got fucking high blood pressure, hypertension, like, the way they eat, and, yeah. it, and sometimes you don't even get like black women are, a lot of times black women get high blood pressure and it's not from their diet it's just the stress of just being yeah. black yeah definitely man definitely the stress, okay, the stress okay, of living in a fucking stop. battlefield okay. yeah if what you live in Baghdad you're going to be a lot more black. stressed out hold on hold on what do you mean by the stress of just being black Just having shit. The, the, the stress, the stress of being a black woman in the hood. The stress of having people you know killed all the time. The stress of you know, Have, yeah, that kind of thing. The specter yeah. of it. Stress. They still continue to be there, and they're not uplifting themselves to get out of that situation. It's, I mean, sometimes it's hard for certain people just to to be there. Like a lot of girls. They had a baby daddy or a husband that was there helping them. And guess what? He gets gone down. He's dead. So now you're back to being a single mother with your children. 
and they were raised in a household of single mother and see this is the thing where maybe was, maybe some some of them wasn't a continue on circle after circle but yet still the birth control and all that is free and available so how you continue to make the same mistakes generation after generation look this is how i feel about it humans gonna have sex period and the result of sex is gonna come a baby that's just the cycle of life no, so, no, it's not the cycle of life. It's a cycle of irresponsibility. Okay. Because and here's the question. If you live in a, in a battlefield, why don't you move away from that battlefield? Right. You grow up in a household. You see your mother struggling. Your daddy ain't shit. And you still stay there instead of going to school and trying to do something. Or either, like I said, like you said, they're going to have sex. Okay, I, I, they have sex. But why not get an implant or use birth control? Or you know this guy is a piece of crap. He's not going to do anything for you. He's going to leave you on the street just like your daddy left your mother. But you're still going to go and continue that on and on? And we're supposed to continue to it's, contribute to that? It's it an, doesn't it's, make any sense. It's an, attitude of, it's an attitude of hopelessness and despair. Where if you don't see things, if you don't see any potential, you don't see the potential of things getting better tomorrow, you feel as though you, have to, you just have to live for the moment. And, and that's why I say the older generation of the community, they have failed the community. They have nothing to say. They have failed their own community and they failed the generations afterwards. Because well, they, well, people, cause, well, well, because they've also been they've been failed themselves, they've been failed themselves by the generation before them. It's it's easy to say what people can and should have done, but if you if like you said, if you come from a family that was already uh poverty, okay. And then you meet, you already have a low self-esteem about yourself as a woman or a man. You go out and you sleep with somebody, you have a baby, and that person that you thought was going to be there for you, either they die or go to jail or just walk away. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough to, you know, they have to work hard to get out of it, get out of that situation, but in the midst of their situation, they going to still have high blood pressure because they're stressed out. It'll cost you $3,500 to rent a U-Haul and move anywhere in the country. People got more than that wrapped up in fucking sneakers. And I'm going to tell you something else that sounds okay, but I have to tell you, those people who are crossing the border that are coming here, believe me, a lot of them don't even speak the language in less than a year or two. They will move up above some people who have been in that same community for a while. So that thing about uh, that still takes a sense of personal responsibility. How do you, how do you receive personal responsibility? Being responsible for your own future. I mean, I'm saying, how, who taught you? Who taught you how to have personal responsibility? My parents. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't have that because their parents is incarcerated. They're dead. They but was... you also, you should be able to learn from that. Exactly. You, they, you don't have... learn, they don't learn from it. They just... Mm, that's the problem. That's what I'm saying. They don't learn from it because it's glorified in their community. And like I said, until the welfare part is dealt with, this will continue because, like you said, they will continue to have sex. They won't get any birth control. They won't go to the doctor. They won't get any kind of health care. They won't get any kind of gyne gynecological exams. But they'll lay up there and get pregnant that me and you and the rest of the taxpayers have to pay for, right? Along with their housing, the cash. I, I don't care about everything else. Me personally. I do care because I don't care. I mean, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm saying. Since 1960. I don't care about taxpayers. I, I don't care about like women getting the help um, with taxpayer dollars because my thing is our taxpayer do dollars is feeding uh, pedophiles right now as we sleep, as we talking. We're that feeding. Is very true. We that feeding. Is very true. We feeding a pedophile. We're feeding the rapists. We're feeding the murderers. Right. We're feeding. We giving them free cable. We giving them free health care. We giving them all of that. But the pedophile so, is not asking for programs to help him, though. These people are. The pedophile is locked up in a controlled environment. These people and, are not. And they don't, they, exactly, we keep him alive with our taxpayer dollars. 
But the and pedophile is not asking and crying on TV for help. The pedophile is not having his children being murdered out in the street. The pedophile, once again, is in a control environment where we can control him. He can't go out and hurt anybody he else. He shouldn't be controlled. These, he should be killed. These, I know that, Mossy, but we're, let's stay, stick with the topic. No, but I, I brought I brought people, that up. Currently, the the pedophile are... the pedophile in prison is currently not a threat to society. Right. No, well, the reason why I brought that up is because when people see that, they think that well, I can do all these things outside of prison and still and still keep my life. So the so the the punishment so that going back to the the punishment is not heavy enough for those for that kind of behavior, which is why a lot of them act they act with they act with impunity. They act like because they act they. they Oxid is they're predacious, they're predators, and when and they, they sense, decide to be predators, if the punishment is not fitting their impunity. We can say the same thing for these women who continue to have children. They know they can't afford to take care of the uh, the punishment is not uh, fitting for the impunity. Because the thing about it is, after you have one child, it's not a mistake to keep having two, three, and four kids by different men. You know who's not going to stand there for you. And then to continue to ask the taxpayer to contribute and help you. No, there needs to be a punishment for that. I totally agree. It's not a mistake at that point. It's a choice. Exactly. No, I agree. I like this girl. And these are the same women who will go out there and march for abortion rights. And who are march if a Republican said, I'm going to cut $10 from Planned Parenthood. The liberals will get them out there, mobilize, and they'll be marching for that. Well, you have all these things, right? So it's no excuse. I don't, okay, that's fine. Uh, but what does the girl having children and she want to have her babies and live in Section 8, get food stamps? Whatever. Stop fucking. Whatever. Fine. Wear a condom. Okay. Okay. I got all that. But if she, it's, it's the, the problem is not from her. She's not the one put on the ski mask and robbing at the gas the station. No, the she man. had the kid that put on the, the ski man. mask over the, and over again. All women have kids. Duh. But all women are not going out there having just sons robbing and shooting people there's only one community a majority that this is happening to and you can continue to deny this all you want to but the reason these kids are out there doing it is because they're not being raised properly we're having to fund this right we're having to fund the death we're having to fund the medical costs because you look at it you talk people talk about gliders but in rural counties at gliders they don't have half the good hospitals that you have in the inner cities they don't get half the access to care that some people get in the inner cities our best hospitals john hopkins stanford all of these hospitals are in the inner city so this crap about disparities in health care is bull mm. you can't and they have access to Planned Parenthood. They will give you free birth control pills. They will give you free condoms. They will give you free implants, IUD device. It's no excuse. The reason these women are doing this is because they're allowed to get away with it. And we're funding it. And they're the ones producing these kids because they're not raising them properly that's going out here robbing and killing people. And it's not right. It's not right. For black men in New Orleans. I submit that we would not tolerate any other disease that targeted a segment of our community so deliberately with such deadly results. And so this, from a public health perspective, should be no different. City Councilman Oliver Thomas put a finer point on the crisis, saying crime knocks on every door, including his own. Well, just in the last couple of months, my family, 57 bullets riddled car one family member, and then burying another, a loved one, with a bullet in the head just a couple weeks ago. And most of the crime fighting measures will be taken up for debate by various city council committees in the coming weeks. We're live at New Orleans City Hall, Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. Another there is new video tonight showing the moments after the deadly attack along the West Side Highway back in 2017. Video shows the suspect waving fake weapons at the police who ultimately take him down. CBS 2's Dick Brennan here now with the details. Dick. 
Grace and Christine, the attacker does not deny his guilt and admits being inspired by ISIS, but his attorneys insist he was not attached to ISIS in any meaningful way. Prosecutors tell a different story, and today they showed him in action. Sefulu Saipov is seen waving two fake weapons at the end of the line in a trail of terror and death. We have multiple casualties. This is a mass casualty situation here. Saipov had just plowed his rental truck down 14 blocks on the west side bike lanes, killing eight people, many of the victims tourists riding city bikes. It was the deadliest terror attack in the city since 9-11. In video entered into evidence at his trial, Saipov is seen running through traffic on West Street. He's heard yelling, Allahu Akbar, Arabic for God is great. He's then seen trying to evade police officers who by now are hot on his trail. He put the issue here at Pier 40, Pier 40, between West Houston and Clarkson. Students at nearby Stuyvesant High School and the borough of Manhattan Community College watch from above in horror. And then the final showdown. Saipov aims his apparent guns at police officer Ryan Nash, who opens fire on him. Wow. At his trial, Saipov does not deny his guilt. Prosecutors showed video of him entering a Home Depot to rent a truck in Passaic, New Jersey on Halloween 2017 and later leaving on his way to carry out his massacre. The truck ultimately plowed into a school bus and came to a stop. In photos shown in court, you can see the receipt for the rental vehicle on the seat. Police also found knives and the fake weapons, a pellet gun and a paintball gun. Diversity is our strength. <laughs>